So good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Milton Hall and today um, we'll be starting a little mini series so I don't know how many parts this is going to be but it's just going to be a few parts and it's all to do with um, this the Hornby station terminus um, now I deliberately bought this for um, for Milton Hall because um, as you guys are fully aware um, I'm no stranger to scratch building and I thoroughly enjoy it and in fact I'll be doing a scratch build um, for the train care depot um, but I specifically wanted to, to buy this especially for Milton Hall because I wanted to do a little series on modifications and what you could do to jazz these things up because um, many of us um, might have old station buildings and canopies and platforms just knocking about in the loft or wherever that are not being used and you just think oh it's just too toy like or too plasticky or it's all beat up you know there's no point using it and I just wanted to show you that there are ways and means of jazzing these things up if you feel the need to um, if you're perfectly happy with its original contents as is and that's perfectly fine um, but I'm going to sort of jazz mine up a bit and modify it and actually customize it a little bit and I'll show you a few things that you can possibly look at doing if you feel that you'd like to, to, to do the same and you can follow me along this mini series and today we're going to be looking at the, um, the station building itself and then we'll move on to the platforms and move on then onto the canopies and all the rest of it so if this is something that will interest you um, then by all means you know feel free to comment and follow these little series and I hope this helps um, like I said because it just might just add that little extra dimension that you might think uh, just enhances the basic the basic structure that that Hornby have given you the, home, the, the foundation that they've given you so before we start I thought I'd show you something that I've already modified you, I'm sure some of you have already noticed it it's a little minor modification but nonetheless um, it's, it's something that is slightly different and that you can customise. Now I bought one of these little station holes, um, mainly for the building, the little yellow building there that you see there. But as nice as it is, it looks a bit too plasticky. But again, if you're happy with that, then that's all well and good, it's fine. But what I have done as a modification to mine is I've actually repainted mine. And that's how it now looks and it is basically in the sort of southwest trains colours but it could easily be anything that you desire um, or if you just wanted to give it just a basic paint job and just paint it white um, then you can do that and just paint the door or whatever and but this is just a way of enhancing what is the basic yellow structure of the waiting room and you could just do something like that and all of a sudden it looks a bit nicer then once you add everything else together and it all comes together um, then it will look just it will just look so much better but like I said it's horses for courses but like I said if you feel like you would like to join me on, on my little mini project series journey then by all means stay tuned and so moving on to today's subject of the video and this is the booking hall that you get with the station terminus now, I deliberately didn't put any windows on this. This is actually brand new. This isn't old, but it could just be easily be an old one that you might have knocking about or it's slightly broken or slightly tatty or whatever. You can still um, do something with them. Now, the strange, the strange thing about this is um, Hornby have decided in their um, new versions um, to give you what's like self-adhesive brickwork and self-adhesive stonework so you have a choice so underneath this is just a naked um, plastic structure um, and then you add the the effects that you would like now the thing the thing is with this this structure now is it's not weatherproof anymore um, the original ones the original booking halls that Hornby did were um, were basically the, the patterns of the stonework were already imprinted onto the plastic, which was better if you were to have to put it outside. 
Now these newer ones, because they put the self-adhesive um, brickwork and stonework, they don't they don't basically lock, they don't weather as well, and they get faded and all sorts. Um, I've seen them on people's layouts that they get faded or they get wrinkled or whatever. So they don't weather as well as the original ones because the original ones were printed directly on the actual main plastic body itself. But what we're going to be doing with this is um, we're going to change the look of this completely and do what I have been doing in the past. So just I'll show you the materials um, that I have that we're going to be using for this. So here we go. I haven't done this for a little while, so I'm very excited about this one. Um, it should be good fun. So here is our little our, our booking office, and I'm just going to just remove the top. And also, I need to remove the roof because inside you get the accessories for the station. Which, to be honest with you, I'm a bit disappointed because in the whole station terminus, that's all you get which I think you should get at least two sprues of each, considering it's supposed to be a mainline station, but hey-ho. So what am I going to be doing to this, or what materials am I going to be using, and all the rest of it. So let's just, just quickly go through what I've got here. Um, now, a lot of this you'll be familiar with, because I've used this before um, in some of my other techniques, and other, uh, my other scratch builds. So it is a partial scratch build, but it's one of those that if you've never done scratch building before and you'd like to have a go, but you're not overly confident, this is a nice way just to practice. You know, if you've got an old building knocking about, um, and you can probably even pick these up from, from exhibitions for, for, for very little money um, because they, they're, they're just so plentiful. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, just take the um, ends off. And the irony about this thing is it's really weird because the booking hall is in this blue. But yet, for some reason, um, these pieces, these, these blue pieces here, the triangle, are uh, the, the capping, I guess, is, um, is in, it's in blue, which you'd expect. But on the ends for the booking hall, they're actually in maroon, which is really weird. So I've had to paint them blue to match. Bit strange. Um, so, like I said, I'll show you that in a minute. The rest of it. So let me just take that off as well, because we're going to do all of that. So I'm just kind of doing this all off camera as well. It's a bit tricky because I'm having to lean right over. So. So just basically putting it into bits again, really. And then if we take the chimneys off as well, that will be quite helpful. So these are sort of like the component parts. So what I did is I went to my local model shop and um, I've done what I've done in the past and I've got myself in there. You might not see it like this, but this is actually four millimeter um, embossed brick sheet, plastic card brick sheet. This is how I normally get them. Um, and so I've got two sheets, because I think I'm gonna need two, I'm not sure. Um, and I've also got a, sh um, a sheet of four millimeter um, roofing tile, so that would be for the roof. And those will be basically glued onto the main body itself. So I have to make the template so I can put that onto, onto the card, onto the plastic card, cut it out, and then I know it will be exactly the same and it will fit exactly the same way. So some of the other bits I got um, was I got some glue um, from, this is a Wilco's one, cheap and cheerful, cost me a pound. Um, I've got that today. It could be just as easily be Yoohoo glue or any type of glue. Um, I also got some Vallejo um, paint, and this is gloss white, and this is grey. So um, I think it's called natural grey, neutral grey is, is, is that one. And if anyone's interested in the colour codes, um, it's 
992 and 70842. So one's a gloss and the other one isn't. So that's what we will be using. So what Hormi have kindly done is um, when you buy one of these station packs, you get a choice and you get, these are the self-adhesive stickers and you get them either in stone or in brick and you just choose which one you'd like to use. And then you just peel away, stick it on and bobs your uncle and fannies your aunt as they say. Um, now the plan is, is to stick one of these on here as a template, cut around it, or if that doesn't work, you can um, line up your your plastic card around around the building and basically mark your way around it. That's another way, which might very well be the simplest way to do it, to be truthful. Um, so we're going to give it a go and see what happens, and we're just going to make a start. So to ensure the accuracy of the... Um, of the actual um, cuts without having to do all the measuring and everything, what I've done is I've taken away one of the self-adhesive um, ends and basically I, what I've done is I've just stuck it on directly onto the plastic card and instead of having to do all the measuring, um, you just basically just follow the cuts. And then that saves you having to go through all the hassle of having to actually literally measure everything to make sure it fits. Now obviously if you've used all of yours and you don't have any spares then, um, then obviously you can do it the other way. Which is just basically lining up like I said and then draw around it and then get the, get the measurements that way. So what I'll do is I'll quickly draw around that one. And I'll mark out the windows. And as you can see, I've done that one. And that will be the same on that side as well. The window will be exactly the same. So, and that's what you do. And then you do it all the way around. And that's the easiest way of doing it, to be honest. I wasn't quite sure how sticky this was, to be honest because I didn't know whether it was going to end up getting too stuck to the brick plastic card, so I've just tried it. But it's not, it's, it's really easy to play with. So basically all you're doing is getting yourself cutting a load of pieces together. So I'll carry on doing that and I'll come back to you once they are all um, cut out. So I just thought I'd show you at this stage where we're at. At the moment, I've just cut out a few of the pieces already that we're going to need. Um, so we're just making our way through. I just wanted to show you this piece because this is one of the side pieces. And you can see exactly where I've marked out the windows and the doors and everything. And what I've done is basically, like I said before, I used the self-adhesive um, backing and placed it on the actual um, plastic card and cut around it. And then after I mark out the windows and doors and then I carefully peel it off and do it again on the other side. Now, one of the things that I've also done is I've left a little bit of extra on the edges on both sides in case you just need to adjust it slightly to make sure that the windows are in the right place. So um, just, just as a little tip because then you can always cut that off afterwards. So I just thought I'd just let you know that whilst we're at this stage. And as if by magic, we are back and it's all done. Now, a couple of things I should point out <clears throat> is um, I've got my little Bluetooth speaker over here, so I've been listening to music whilst I've been doing this, which helps quite greatly. Because um, in reality, although it seems like a few seconds on the camera, um, in reality it's probably about um, near enough an hour or so to get this all done. Um, it's just cutting out all the bits and pieces. It's mainly the windows because you have to be so sort of careful to make sure it all lines up. So for the big bits, I've just used quite a chunky pair of scissors and to get inside the windows, I've just got these little mini pair of scissors with the pointy ends, which really gets into all the crevices that you need to, to get all the things 
uh, and windows cut out. And so here you go, here it's all the list of components that we have here, um, which have already been cut out, ready to go on to the actual building. So we've got the um, we've got the roof here for the top part, and those are those two bits there. Um, and then we've got the actual uh, main part itself, and then we've got those two bits there, and those little odd little pieces there. And then we've got the main building itself, and then we've got the sides there, and the back end, and the back ends there, and the front there. Well, I should say the front and the back and the two sides there. And then we've got the roof here, um, which is going to go onto here. Now, um, like I did say, the sides and all the bits are slightly oversized um, because basically just to make sure that you can line them up properly, all the nooks and crannies um, properly, like all these little these little little dinks and cutouts. Uh, so if you oversized it slightly, then you've got a little bit of a manoeuvre to be able to move it slightly to the left or to the right and still be in the right position. And then you can just trim off the edges and the excess um, thereafter using the same method with the scissors. Um, the next thing to do now is to start gluing it all together. Um, but what I want to do is I'm just going to quickly mask off the doors because I want to keep the blue on the doors and then I can glue the rest on um, as and when really. Okay, so join me shortly. So I thought I'd just show you um, that this I'm just peeling off the original um, stonework, which is self-adhesive, and it comes off very, very easily, which is not very good in terms of um, weathering outside because this will tend to peel away. But the nice thing about this is that I can now reveal it back to its original naked plastic body. Um, like I say, you can see it like that. Now you can see it completely naked without its without any any, any self adhesive backing. And what that does is it gives it a nice um, it's a nice base to work with to glue the plastic card onto. Because um, the last thing you want to do is basically glue if you can avoid it onto the paper. Because if the paper starts to peel, then the plastic card will come away with it. So if you can basically um, glue direct to the plastic here, then it's a much better way of doing it. So join me in just a short few moments. So the next bit is, is um, I've masked the doors, um, but I've also started putting the ends. As you can see, I've just started covering the ends. Now I've done the ends first, and then I'll do the sides. Now, what I did is the ends are all slightly oversized, and then I have to basically use the scissors to trim it to exact um, as close as I can to the building to get as good a fit as I possibly can. And that's what I'll do with the sides. They're slightly oversized on the ends, but that's just to ensure to, to get a really good corner fit um, just over here. And then it probably, it might even negate the needs for doing any filling. You might be able just to, when you paint over it, it that might very well be it. So you just join me when I, once I've finished um, doing the building and before painting up. And so here we go. Just to show you, we have now completed um, fitting all the bits and pieces that we need and it's now ready for painting. It all comes off as it did before originally and then they're not glued down, it's all just like Hornby made it originally. The roof comes off, the little turret comes off. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's now just ready for painting now as you can see I've done the roof and I've done the um, and I've done and I've done the, the, the building itself so now it's just a case of starting to paint it and then bringing it all together and see how the finished building will look once it's all done so I'm just gonna go off and prime it and the next time you see it it'll be it'll be all primed and ready and I'll show it to you before I actually do the final painting and putting all the other bits and pieces back together again. So, um, excuse the mess of the workbench, um, I just thought I'd show you where we're at. I gave it a first coat of um, primer, and you can, and I forgot to do the bottom bit. And I also remembered I had some of these um, these sort of arches from from um, wheels, so I thought I do put them on as well. And luckily, I had more than enough from a previous build to put them on and then that will also add some lovely detail to the building 
So I'm going to go over it again. The yellow bits, as you can see, is where the gaps were, and I've just filled them in with some milliput. So I'm about to go and do a final kind of primer, and then after I can do a top coat after that, and hopefully it will come out all right. So speak to you soon. So hello and um, welcome back. Now I have now finished the um, scratch, well not, I wouldn't say scratch build, but the modification on my station build in the booking hall. And I, I hope you'll be impressed. I'll just go through it with you. Um, because if this is something that you're impressed with, then by all means have a go. So let me just show you what I've done. And you can tell me what you think in the comments below. So here is my station build, um, well, my station modification, I should say. So this building now kind of represents um, a building which is obviously an old, old building, um, and that has been refurbished um, and just tidied up and modernised. Um, so that's kind of the kind of the kind of view that I'm looking at it from. So. This is to go with the modern era stuff that I tend to run, and it's sort of in a southwestern, southwest trains um, colours. Um, so almost blaspheme in there. Uh, southwestern railway, naughty. Um, southwest trains is how I prefer to look at it, um, and it's in their sort of colours, um, in their sort of stations. Um, obviously, stations come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and some have been modernised to various degrees and um, some are ultra modern, some aren't, um, some are still kept in their original brickwork, others have been painted and this is kind of a building that's been represented as been had a, had a modification, has been tidied up after looking a bit tired after all the years so it's just had a little bit of, of an upgrade, a bit of a refurbishment. So what have I done? So essentially the original building um, was blue, um, it was brickwork self adhesive sheet or stonework, whichever you preferred, but the actual um, bits and pieces, the capping, the canopy, that was all originally in blue and the doors. Now I haven't actually painted the doors or the canopy or that, uh, the capping. Um, so it goes to show you that the blue I used is really, really good and it's really, really close. Um, so what I've done is, I don't know if this was, will come up, um, but on a quick glance, the only thing I haven't done is the chimneys. Um, I'm probably going to have to do those. I was just kind of seeing whether I liked them or not. I'm not sure whether it was a bit overkill or whether it provided a nice contrast. Maybe you could let me know. So I don't know if you will show the brickwork. I don't know if it will come up. I think you can see it. So you can see it's the brick embossed plastic card. You can also see the, um, the tiles, the roof tiles. At least I hope you can. And I've just kept it as original as I can, and I've also put the little lintels on the bottom, and I've also added the little arches that you get from Wills, which you can see there all the way around. So my little station upgrade looks really, really quite nice, and on the other side, it's very plain. Um, so it's ready to add further details, such as station signage, um, posters, things like that, but in a more modern feel, which will then add that a little bit of extra kind of um, dimension and will sort of set the scene as to roughly where we're at with, this, with the era that I'm running and all the rest of it and set the time period. So I'm really, really impressed with this. And overall, I've really enjoyed it. It's taken me an evening. I did it all last night um, because the paints that I used were acrylic. Now, the Vallejo and white was actually a gloss, but it's actually um, acrylic, so it dries very quick. So that's why I quite like using it. And it goes off so quick, and, and the same with the roof. And I've really, really enjoyed it. What I might just do is actually tidy up the top uh, and sort of give that an extra bit of a shine. Um, and just to say it's got um, the flashing. Kind of a bit like what Tony Northeastern done on his buildings. Um, and just sort of set that off and just give it a bit of a gunmetal sort of flashing on the top or something like that just to set it off. But overall, I'm, I'm really, really impressed and pleased with what I've done. Now, this is just what I've done. Now, if you're interested in doing this yourself, um, you can use the plastic card that I've been using. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
um, which is the roof tiles. But then again, uh, when it comes to actually the building itself, it's down to personal choice. I've used brick, but you can buy stone plastic tiles if you wish to go down that road. But this is just an idea of what you can do if you've got one of these booking halls. Now mine was brand new, but maybe yours is a bit tatty or, or whatever, or, or, or broken or cracked or whatever, and you might think, I could put this building back into use. Because you can cover up a multitude of sins by doing things like this. So if it's got paint on the original brickwork and it looks really untidy, you can just cover it up with a bit of plastic card and, and do the rest of it. I should say that I did cut the lugs off the canopy because I did have these, 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 this canopy does have lugs on it which sort of goes into the building. But because of the thickness of the um, plastic card, it won't go in. So what I did is I've um, basically cut the lugs off and just glued the canopy straight on the front. So overall, I'm really, really impressed and really pleased with this. And it goes really nicely with my little waiting room, which is right down there. So just before we go, um, I did show it briefly on Facebook. Um, but in case you've missed it, um, I have had some signage delivered. Um, and I'm waiting for some more signage. And this will all go towards the Southwest Railways theme. Southwest Trains theme, I should say. Um, so I've had this turn up. So I've got some more coming, it's all on the way. Um, and that's for when I do my train care depot, which will, uh, will be where currently all of this stock is sort of sitting. But I've just been playing around with that. Um, if you're interested in this signage and you're really impressed by the signage, I have mentioned him before, but I will mention him again. He's, I think he's probably the best one on eBay. There is a few others that do do it. Um, but I've, I've, I've always gone back to him because I always find that his, his um, signs always tend to be the most authentic in my view. Um, so like I said, these are, once again, the signs. And it is from a company called um, Eagle One. And on Facebook, he is J... Uh, on eBay, he's Jay Mupton. Um, so, you know, he's really cool and he's really fast and accommodating actually because the, um, I got this within a few days of ordering it um, and the train care depot that I'm, I'm getting off of him, um, well basically I, I couldn't see it. So I asked the question and I queried it with him and sort of asked him, I said, look, you know, I'd like to do um, a train care depot but I don't see the signage in the Southwest Trains um, logo that I wanted which is basically the same as this and he said oh well leave it with me and I'll get back to you and sure enough within a couple of days he got back to me and he said look you know he sent me uh, a sort of prototype an email prototype and he said look <clears throat> excuse me um, this is what I've done what do you think it looked absolutely great exactly what I was after He's gone brilliant, fantastic, and I ordered it, and it should now be here probably Monday or Tuesday. So he's really, really accommodating. If you haven't, he if he hasn't got something that you want, please ask him, and he might be able to um, to accommodate you and sort something out for you. So, so it's really good. So he's been really, really great. So, so it's a great mention to him um, because I just think he deserves it. Because like I said, he did actually. Funny enough, hang on there. He did actually do, do the barrier sign that you might see here that's still sitting on my on my signal box from all that from all that time ago. So I still have that. Um, I'm going to take it off obviously and replace it with Milden Hall. Um, I was just contemplating whether or not I'm actually going to use this particular signal box or not. But anyway, um, that concludes this video. So I hope you like the first part of my little Hornby modification series. Um, so next time we'll be looking at the platforms along the back there um, because there are also um, bits that you can do there to modify them and to just make them, jazz them up a bit, make them a bit more realistic and just generally give the, um, the, the station a bit of a spruce up in terms of from its original kind of origins um, like I said, the original foundations that they that Hornby gave you and spruce it up into something a little bit more, um, I don't know, realistic if that's what you're going for. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with, with, with how it is originally at all. It's just whether or not it's something that you'd like to do. 
and it's something that I would like to do. And also, I haven't really seen anybody do any videos like that, like this. So, you know, for those who may be interested in going a lot down this road, at least it will give you a bit of a rough idea of what you can do or what you can't do. So, until the next time, it's um, goodbye from Milden Hall, and it will probably be a layout update next. Um, although, um, I am due to see my friend Nigel today at Cotton End, so who knows whether or not there might be a video there or not. So, until the next time, it's goodbye from Milden Hall. Goodbye.